All right, everyone. How has your day been? Anyone here with uh, uh, filled all the bingo squares? All right. Good. Although that's, that was not the goal. The goal was to make meaningful interactions with our partners. So if you're not filled all the squares, you have plenty of time to still continue with that. And you don't need to fill all the squares. You just need to make connections. Just a reminder that after this panel, uh, we will start with the speed dating. So if you have registered to the speed dating, be here on time. The speed dating booth is over here. Uh, if you're not registered for speed dating, unfortunately, it's too late. Uh, next year, maybe you'll have a chance to do that. It promises to be an amazing experience for the ones who have registered. But let's not keep you waiting. Uh, we have the next panel coming up. Here is Yuri Mik to introduce it. Hello, everyone. Uh, very nice to see you all here. Without further ado, let me introduce uh, our panelists uh, who will be talking about the process of getting hired as a Gojofi student. So please give it up for Mart Kekishev, <laughs> Emil Varnomasing, uh, Laura Elisa Marrandi, and Annika Tam, if you will. Um, yes, so very nice to have you all here. Um, and um, actually, since you guys have already uh, gotten either recruited or started an internship, it would be very nice to hear uh, the process of how you ended up first as a Gojefi student and then how you got hired or taken to the place that you are now. So first of, first off, it uh, would be great to hear your story in a nutshell. Uh, uh, who you are, how did you get to Gojefi, what is your current role? Um, who wants to start? Let's do it from Annika, from you. Hiya, yes, I'm Annika. I'm a second batch student uh, in Godiafe and uh, with no sort of prior coding experience, it's uh, definitely a very, very new thing to me because um, I used to work in a hospital um, as a, on a medical side, so definitely changing a career. Um, yeah, at, at the moment, I'm not working in uh, a, you know, sort of any any companies as such, but we are, uh, I'm a co-founder of Strict, um, and we are building a network monitoring tool, and obviously it's a sort of a spin-off from Gojofi, so Gojofi is definitely giving us much already, not just experience to go to the job market, market. So you started a startup by yourself? Uh, with two other Goidefi students, sorry, yes, couple. By two other <laughs> <So> members. <laughs> yes. Super cool. Thank you. Uh, Laura. Testing. 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 All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, so my name is Laura. Uh, I am a uh, first batch Goidefi student. Uh, yeah. Specialized in uh, mobile development. I uh, graduated this, this December. No, that not just um, September, and I uh, went on to uh, take part in uh, this year's Playtech Wintership, uh, which is a uh, winter internship, and it has been a uh, very lovely experience. It uh, my my team is awesome, the work is awesome. It's it's really nice. Is it a specific role that you applied for, or the oh, internship yeah. is for? Uh, I applied for a uh, Java developer. Uh, so I'm uh, doing software development uh, in Java. Nice. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Emil. And uh, currently I'm working as a software developer at uh, ProExpert. Um, one and a half year. And uh, also uh, I'm uh, from the first batch. And uh, uh, also I'm trying myself at uh, Startup World. So I am also a founder. And uh, yeah, nice, nice to uh, be here. How did you get involved with Kojofi in the first place? Did you have any prior coding experience? Yeah, I have a little bit. Um, actually, I have uh, finished uh, studying at uh, Tartu uh, Vocational Education Center uh, at Itefield, but uh, then uh, I um, 
kind of understa understand that, uh, okay, I need more, more uh, practice task uh, and uh, then I see, other, uh, I think in some TV program uh, mm -hmm. about Cody Dihui and then I start uh, thinking that, okay, it's maybe uh, I was waiting this opportunity all my life and uh, I don't regret it. I, yeah, I really like it. That's great to hear. Mart? Mm, hello. Um, I'm also from the first batch um, and I didn't have any previous uh, coding experience before joining Kodiofi. I was working as a metal artist and I was teaching in a vocational school uh, teaching blacksmiths, uh, so it was qu quite a big pivot. Um, From a blacksmith to yeah, a coder? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, after the first year, uh, I applied to, uh, to be a technical support on the second year uh, selection sprints. Mm, that was my first sort of IT uh, work experience, and I would say it was one of the most useful experiences I got from Godiof. It, it really showed me that I, uh, I, I am capable uh, and it made me hungry for, uh, for um, a bigger job, a real job. Uh, and I, I found one uh, shortly after the, the um, internship in Godiof. Uh, I work in Simple Magic. I started as a junior developer um, I did that for half a year and then I moved uh, to work on game design. Um, I'm sort of in a transition from that position into something else. Uh, we'll, we'll see what, what that exactly is. <laughs> so this is still in the works, figuring this thing out? Yeah. Okay. Um, but when you joined, Kodiofi, how was how was your thinking or understanding of the different roles available uh, in the tech sector? Like, did you did you know already what you wanted to do or go? Uh, or, w for example, Mark, did you know that you wanted to go into game sector or? Yes, this was my childhood dream. It was the only reason why I came to Kodiofi. Um, yeah, I, I had a very very uh, specific goal in mind. Okay. What about the rest? Uh, yes. Uh, as I said, I have uh, finished uh, uh, Tartu Voca uh, Vocational Education Center and uh, I have uh, thoughts that I want to be a developer. I really enjoy writing code on an everyday, everyday basis. And uh, my first thought was, okay, maybe I'm just, uh, you know, a full, not full stack, but a front-end developer. But uh, also I want to learn about uh, back-end and uh, Kodifi bring me uh, to, to, to this, uh, 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 Kodifi help me uh, study uh, how to be a full stack, uh, really full stack developer. And uh, yeah, I think from second month uh, in Kodifi, I have uh, clearly understanding that, okay, I want to be a full stack and, uh, and uh, if it goes well, maybe I can someday found my startup or, or something like this. For me, um, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I came to Kodiofi. I only know that uh, I really liked software development and programming and the entire like concept of it that really fascinated me. So Kodiofi was also a natural fit uh, for me because we had that opportunity that we got to try out back-end and front-end and all sorts of uh, different things and specialize at the end. So I saw that, you know, I could enter this field, I can test out different things and I could figure out as I go what suited me. I figured out that back-end development uh, fit me and I really liked object-oriented programming. So that's why after finishing Godiofi, I started to learn Java because it uh, felt like a natural fit for me. Yeah, and uh, almost almost the same as Emil, that if, if you know what you're going to do, you'll probably do it. And I know that never ever will be a full stack developer. After two months, I was even more sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> why so, is that? Yeah. 
Um, I, I, I don't even know. I'm just not into the back end stuff whatsoever. I'm so sorry. Um, but I knew that I'd rather do something that people see or the visual parts, um, like building websites or like components and things like that. So I'm definitely leaning towards that. So pretty much after two months, I knew that I'm not going to be a full stack <laughs> for sure. But I did an internship in. Um, and front-end development uh, in Playtech last uh, well, previous summer, and um, there, like I know, front-end can be very sort of different. The, the, that was, yeah. Um, I can't really say that I very much enjoyed it because it wasn't the visual thing that I, I thought it's going to be. So I think I'm definitely leaning more, leaning more to uh, app development or web development. So I'm going in that direction. Hmm. Yeah, that is understandable, but for me, uh, the internship has been like a completely uh, different kind of experience. You talked a lot about, the, we, we talked uh, before the panel as well, that uh, you were like, uh, you know, put from team to team, and uh, it, it really did sound like a bit of a mismanagement, but in my experience, it's been uh, completely different. Like, I started my internship with my direct manager being in, on vacation and my mentor being sick, so I had no one <laughs> really to report to. But I had an absolutely lovely team of people and I kind of like, you know, I went to another mentor, uh, the, the, had another intern for the uh, internship and I just kind of like listened it and asked for help and he would actually help me and everybody else was also like uh, very supportive and uh, the experience, although it only has been two weeks, has been uh, very hard but very nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely, I can relate that team that you're working with um, sometimes is far more important than your skills. What kind of experience or learnings have you taken away from being a student of Kodjofi, being after finishing uh, the program, now doing your own stuff or working for uh, for 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 a company, what's what's the things looking back that have helped you uh, that you've taken from Kodjofi? Yeah, um, for me, I definitely uh, I have to think about it, and uh, I think this uh, not be scared about new problems, and uh, don't 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 be scared about new problems and uh, Trust yourself and try new things out. Like uh, my first day at at ProExpert uh, at uh, uh, back days, then um, I have also a task which uh, uh, which was uh, uh, related with Java. And uh, actually, I don't uh, uh, really know then uh, Java. And uh, yeah, I think it, that's okay. It's uh, I for from. Uh, let's say from next week, uh, I need to start writing production code in Java, and I have only one week to learn it. But I think that okay, I have to do in code if we go JavaScript Rust. So Java is basically the same thing. So code if helped me a lot. Uh, believe in myself. Uh, yeah, I can. I think it helps you to adapt to different situations. Definitely. I m maybe maybe it gave me a framework um, that really helps me uh, learn new uh, skill sets fast because it's it's inevitable like uh, the technology it uh, it evolves so fast you need to be ready to to uh, learn new things all the time yeah, I would say like one of the things that I've seen in general with Kodiofi uh, students is the confidence uh, that comes from there. That uh, like <laughs> uh, a little while ago I was uh, in uh, do through you. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a bit of mumbling, but uh, through Kodiofi there was this event uh, tour of Ulamista. And uh, we got to go to Ulamis to see different companies, go and talk to her. And at the end, uh, they asked us to, uh, you know, who to volunteer to talk about the uh, companies that we went to. 
and there was like there were so many uh, different like university students and everything, but 70% of the people who volunteered and were uh, in front of there talking about their experiences were Kodiofi students. And I think that really like solidifies what Kodiofi uh, is about, that we're a community, that we're enthusiastic about this uh, tech thing, we're constantly uh, looking for ways to improve, to develop, to learn, and that is the greatest uh, strength that we have. Okay. Uh, but if we were to shift gears now from, from you know, the personal experiences uh, being a Kodiofi student to uh, getting a job or going through the process of, uh, of uh, being hired or starting your own company. Um, it would be, I think for most of the listeners here, it would be good to know, how did you go from, uh, from thinking, okay, I need to, I want to explore that sector, I want to get a job in that in that company to actually getting it or doing it? How, how many uh, interviews or how many CVs did you have to send out? Uh, what was the process like? Um, I did not know what sort of sector I want to go into and I sort of just applied. And uh, don't just send out your CVs. Uh, look what the job description is. See, uh, change your CV if needed. Do a cover letter. Spend time on it. And um, with my Playtech interview, I was the only one who asked to go in as a, as a per, in, a, in, a per, in person, um, because a lot of other people did their interviews through Zoom. And I think that's maybe one of the reasons why I actually got the job, because I had the opportunity to show my character, because I feel like a lot of the times, if it comes to internships, um, it's the person that they're looking for, not not the skills as such. So they're looking for a person who wants to um, change maybe their career, want to apply their new skills, anything like that. So they're looking for a person who's motivated to do the job. Yeah, for me, I I think I only sent an application to like two places. One was Playtech and one was uh, the summer internship for Microsoft. That technical assignment I totally fluffed, so I am not surprised I haven't heard anything back yet. But for me, like I really put the uh, effort into it, and I, uh, I definitely like for me my strategy into getting an actual like uh, a, a stable IT role is to go through a uh, internship because, uh, like I. I've spent a lot of time talking with a lot of uh, different people from Kodiofi, you know, at the kitchen, just brainstorming ideas like what the uh, IT market is like. And getting a first junior position is, uh, is the most difficult part because afterwards you already have something, uh, you know, to prove, to put on the table. So if uh, you ever go to the uh, IT like uh, market and you're having uh, difficulties then applying to an internship and proving yourself uh, from there is is uh, definitely a good choice and what i've heard a lot as well is uh, that a lot of people like companies as well i've, I've asked uh, recruiters and people at playtech as well if they've already put uh, so much money and effort into you uh, through an internship, then why wouldn't they also want to hire you afterwards? Uh, because you're already in the system and if you fit into the team and you're having a good time and you're already pro like uh, providing value to the company, then yeah, it makes sense. So for me, the strategy was to first start out as an internship, which is maybe like a role that's, uh, there's less pressure for you to perform versus in uh, a junior position, I think like, uh, you all can probably, uh, or these two can uh, uh, talk about that better, but it felt uh, very intimidating uh, to me to already be a junior because it felt like a junior had more responsibilities than, uh, than an intern. So yeah, that was kind of a strategy. I applied to one place, I put all of my effort into that, and somehow I got there. <laughs> it's, uh, don't ask me how. <laughs> uh, and when did you get an internship? use that time to ask as many questions as you, as you can from the team, from your mentors, from your team leads. Definitely worth it. Yeah, and uh, in my opinion, companies uh, seeks for proactive uh, workers. And uh, 
if you really want uh, to get the position, uh, put yourself uh, in the, uh, this company uh, position and uh, think uh, what what you what you want from the worker. Or because like okay, you can be a I don't know designer, software engineer, uh, something uh, other QA, but all what uh, company wants from us is solving uh, their business problems. So just think about their business. Think how how you can manage to uh, solve some problems and be a proactive. Mm, from my side, um, well, um, I try to use uh, the, um, the possibilities available here as much as possible. Um, I, I almost didn't apply to be the technical support during the sprint, but I'm really glad I did. Um, this uh, was this experience was sort of crucial to prove that uh, uh, I am employable in the IT field also. Um, and so yeah, tr try to use all the opportunities you get uh, in Godiofi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kodifi. I also I have my first uh, pro expert uh, internship because of Kodifi. Uh, we have visited Tallinn office, and then I, as I said, be a proactive. I and then I was very proactive, and uh, one of the senior developers uh, mentioned me. And uh, after the session, he comes and say, uh, Emil, do you want uh, come and try work at ProExpert? So for me, it's, it it was just so easy that I said, yeah, like I I, re I really really like ProExpert. Uh, why not? And here I am. Also, probably one of my favorite sayings of all times: your network is your net worth. So probably goes on with go, with the bingos there. I was thinking about another saying. Uh, actually, when you mentioned that people or recruiters or companies look for the. Uh, uh, not, not only for your skills, but also what kind of a persona or what values do you have. But there is a saying that companies hire for skills, but fire for um, the values you represent. So, did you, so from your own experience, you, you, you would say that there's both needed. You need to kind of show yourself from a good uh, soft skills perspective as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you, I think once you get into the job, you probably need both. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're, you, you can't really compare those two, I feel. It's, if, if you don't fit in the team, how are you going to be success, successful in your role? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And uh, did you want to talk? Uh, one of the things that's also very important that they're looking for is uh, a strength of character because like I, I uh, listened to the beginning ski speech that the uh, GM CT CTO was giving and it uh, really highlights uh, highlighted an important thing which is you can't give up when it gets hard like uh, the reality of uh, coding on product code, like we're talking about that this company was created uh, the same year that I was born. So the code pace is massive. And uh, like in code, if you took a project, it would take like, after uh, like three days, you would have already something sizable done if uh, you really like took time and coded. We're talking about like in uh, three or four days. At the start, I was given a task, a real problem uh, that they had in the system. And I knew already like how to solve it, but I had to also reproduce the problem and re and create tests for it. And after two, three or two days, I had only written like 20 to 100 lines at max um, of code because it just took me so long to read through all the existing code and to find the right methods and functions to call in order to, um, to create my test. So it was, extremely hard. It still is. Um, uh, hopefully, like I've heard from others, that it will get easier, which is... Oh, I, I really hope it does happen. Uh, but uh, one of the things that uh, I think that really highlights me is I have a strength of character that 
even though it is extremely hard, you don't give up, you keep trying. And uh, if you're completely stuck, you get out of your seat, you go, you talk with your teammates about something else, get your mind off the code, and then you go back and you keep going. And uh, that's how you eventually become a great developer. And I think that's something that uh, they're looking for uh, when, when you come there, especially uh, with these beginner roles that you can actually survive in the ecosystem. I think it's great that you brought out those challenges when, when you're starting out uh, as a junior, pretty much. I wonder if, if there were any challenges that others faced um, during the first months uh, of your um, job. Well, when I started, I, I, um, I had to start um, programming in Lua and I had zero experience in Lua before my first day at my... Lua. Lua, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's uh, the, the most important part is, yeah, like um, being able to um, uh, to pick yourself up and, and uh, teach yourself. That's, that's, that's the part that um, brings value to the employer. That's what they're after. So you could be thrown into pretty much unknown water. It's important how you kind of adapt to the situation, which hopefully Kojofi provides the skills for. Yeah, and uh, I'm totally agree. Uh, so as I said, my at my first day, I uh, understand that, okay, I don't know Java, but I need to learn it. And I have only one week for this stuff. And uh, somehow I managed it, it and I, uh, build a working prototype for ProExpert. And uh, nowadays, I'm still, I have new languages and new stuff that I need uh, to learn. For example, uh, for in, uh, in, in nowadays, uh, I have uh, some uh, very old code uh, in Ember.js. Maybe somebody know about it. And uh, there is there are a lot of things in this uh, code are deprecated, deprecated. So if you open a console in we in uh, a web browser, then there is a, I don't know hundred hundred errors and uh, some stuff. And I need to understand this code and rewrite it in uh, React. So basically, it's a crazy stuff. It's spaghetti code, but <laughs> but yeah, as if if you think that. Uh, Every, everything will be easy, they're not, but uh, the best part that uh, if you're solving these problems and you get through these problems, then you are, uh, get better understanding of, uh, of the field and you have this uh, emotion that, uh, yeah, I can handle it. From a practical perspective, were there any resources or materials that were of particular help or you found helpful when uh, when um, you know, uh, you know, putting out your applications or updating your LinkedIn, like, did you use any books or like, if people were to think, if there's anything to read? For me, uh, what really helped me was that uh, I'm actually uh, still taking part of it. It's uh, through uh, the unemployment office. Uh, you can. Uh, take for free uh, certain courses and I'm doing a uh, Java evening uh, course right now. And it was uh, really nice because, um, you know, Kodiofi is a wonderful school, but one of the disadvantages is that you're doing a lot of these things in the dark and you only have yourself to really, like, criticize these things. You can also ask other people as well, but uh, at the end, like, everybody else is busy as well. So it was really nice to have someone who's a mentor figure. Like, I even got to like, you know, during the advent of code, I showed him some of the things that I was doing there in Java and I had some Java specific problems. And he would come, he would look at it, he would say that this is good, this could be removed, this could be changed. And uh, getting that feedback, it was so like exhilarating. It wasn't like I had to constantly think like, oh, what am I doing? Is this good? Is this right? Is this uh, whatever? Uh, and it was uh, totally free. So um, it, it's an idea for uh, you all as well once you uh, finish the school that maybe like if you uh, want to try out Java or some different languages, look at these uh, courses online and even if you have a little bit of money, like pay some uh, mentor to um, 
ask for help. I know that uh, my roommate, uh, Kunta Glava, uh, he was in uh, Riga Tech Girls program doing a uh, cyber wallet and she also had a uh, mentor who would give her feedback and, um, and recommendations and such. So I think that is a very, uh, a very valuable source to have, just someone who would uh, tell you, like, uh, you don't need uh, someone to constantly, like, hold your hand, quite uh, you feel like it gives you a lot of uh, independence, it uh, teaches you how to think you're on own, uh, but to have someone like that, it's a very valuable resource. Um, yeah, when I was uh, studying in Kodihvi, I watched uh, a lot of IT courses, um, and uh, also I have a big list from books, but nowadays I mostly use ChatGPT, if I <laughs> don't know anything, I just uh, like uh, Google it, uh, but from ChatGPT. And uh, yeah, it's a good stuff uh, and good tool to learn new things. And uh, mm, also, I can, I can recommend uh, w maybe subscribe some YouTube channels and uh, on your free time, uh, watch some just for advertising uh, uh, some IT, uh, I don't know, funny videos or something like this. And uh, yeah, and maybe podcasts. I I have uh, three or four IT podcasts that I want uh, to uh, listen on every every week uh, basis. So yeah. So if you want to get uh, inspired by Emil, then definitely contact him for those podcasts. But thinking about the those going going for, forward with the practical recommendations. Uh, um, for the last 15 minutes, which I want to give some time for uh, for the listeners as well, maybe to ask some questions. So if you have anything, then uh, you can you can prepare. Uh, but before that, any other practical recommendations for just actually landing a job that we haven't already discussed here? Because one one thing that I that I just want to re reiterate or kind of rephrase what Mart I think mentioned was just the importance of getting something out, getting some experience. Uh, kind of listed as as uh, an official experience on your CV or or on LinkedIn uh, because from our own now talking as a as a product manager for Kodjofi um, as the fourth batch may know the new platform is something that we uh, we have developed uh, with our own Kodjofi students uh, now being uh, developers and uh, employer employees of uh, of our company, that it was a cool anecdote that one of our juniors that just joined last week told me. After so, this this person had been looking for a job for months, and now once this guy put uh, uh, that on his LinkedIn that he started as a junior uh, in, um, for Kojofi, he got like five messages uh, inbound on LinkedIn. So it's a kind of, it's nuts. So. If you have something like that, then definitely do that. Um, and the second one is based also on the experience of people submitting uh, their homework for for job applications. Uh, be careful with the deadline that uh, you set for yourself. A lot of those M, uh, companies ask, when do you want to submit it? Uh, submit your homework that has, is given to you by the by the company. Uh, they just want to see if you deliver on time uh, for what you actually have estimated yourself. And if you do that, then make sure that the homework is of high uh, standard. So don't try and impress anyone with speed, rather try and impress them with, uh, with the quality and the thoroughness. I would even add that um, a part of this homework that is sometimes overlooked but uh, for the employer, it's it's uh, maybe as important as the homework itself is is how you react to the to the feedback after it's submitted. Um, how do you re react to the to the to the constructive criticism? Uh, and how do you communicate this? And how how do you make um, improvements in the homework? That part can be the deciding factor. Like how would you actually uh, perform in this role? And, and also you mentioned about LinkedIn and all that. 
if you know what sort of sector you want to go into, find recruiters, reach out, and they will help you, I don't know, to pump up your CV or your LinkedIn to show your skills better. So that that's definitely uh, worth doing as well. Any other recommendations, or we should we just give the floor to our listeners? I have speak from my experience, and for me, it worked uh, networking. So, yeah, go to the go to the people, speak with them, write to LinkedIn if you really want to uh, get in in some company. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. There is no silver bullet for for applying. Just to be a normal person and, <laughs> I don't know, uh, search uh, some information in the web ab about this company. And, uh, yeah, it's very simple, I think. Yeah, and definitely uh, prepare for an interview as well. I came with a little list of uh, questions and the... Uh, uh, person who was interviewing me was actually surprised that uh, I came so prepared and I put a lot of effort into the uh, uh, technical homework as well. So from that it reflected uh, my values of like, you know, I, I showed them that I was very dedicated and I had a high quality of standards and that is very important because, you know, the code that you're creating right now is going to be uh, read and used and uh, recycled even uh, for many, many years to come. So quality is very important. And get over the fear of someone saying no to you. It's just no, life goes on. I think those are great recommendations. And perhaps uh, now, now is the good time to open up for questions from the audience. Don't be shy at all. Imbi? So the question is, how does one uh, stop oneself from working too long and keeping the work-life balance in that sense? Well, for me, it was very easy to overwork myself in Goedefi, actually. I, I purred up like uh, two or three times because I constantly like I work, I sleep and I do everything in the same environment. So right now uh, in the internship, I leave my laptops and all of my work stuff uh, at work, so when I come home, I'm completely uh, focused on what's going on there, what I have to do. I clean, I cook, I uh, spend time with uh, my loved ones, and that really helps me to separate. And it has uh, become way easier, because even if you feel like, oh, I have to do these things, I didn't get everything done at work, all of my work stuff is at work anyways. So it's, it's a uh, from eight to 17 work, and that's it. And having those boundaries, it really helped uh, detach from it. Um, we we have a uh, sort of similar uh, mindset at our uh, our studio. It's um, everybody's probably heard about crunch and game development, and they are like synonymous. And uh, we are trying to address this problem as we we build. Uh, build this company. We, we luckily our managers have uh, experienced burned out, so it's like um, no work on weekends, uh, no work on the evenings, uh, and then the, um, I also uh, really prefer working in the office. Uh, th that way, it's like you leave the office and that's it. It's uh, the, the, the days uh, I, I work from home are, are more hard to manage. And um, it was easier when I was junior developer. Uh, it's been getting more and more difficult uh, when I have been moving moving up in the in the ranks. Um, but yeah, it's it, you have to have boundaries, and and it, you better choose a company that also values their employees. Mm -hmm. So setting those boundaries is, uh, is an important part of this. Perhaps there are some other questions uh, before, Emil, you want to share? Uh, Egon? Yeah. I have a question. Like, uh, it consists of two parts. 
how long you study before coding and uh, do you think you should start applying way earlier than you did? Could you repeat that question? Like how long did you study coding before applying to jobs and do you think like you should start applying earlier to the jobs than you did actually based on the knowledge what you have now working on the, as a software developer? Well, for me, uh, my uh, evening uh, classes for Java, they didn't actually, uh, they started after I got my first technical assignment. So at that point, I just like been like uh, dabbling in, like uh, trying out Java uh, a little bit. So I actually didn't know a lot about it, but I, you know, I knew the basics and I know that the technical assignment would be in Java. So I just sort of wing it, and in that one week that uh, I had uh, the time to do the electrical assignment, it was just complete crunch. I just woke up in the morning, uh, worked entire day basically, and by Sunday I was, <laughs> I was completely burned out. I was so tired. But uh, I didn't really need a lot of uh, time to, uh, uh, to learn Java because, you know, I'd been studying at Kodiofi for two years at that point. I'd done so many projects, I already knew the best practices for coding, so I just applied it all and uh, it was enough. Yeah, but uh, second part, uh, do, do you think you should apply after one year studying in Kodiofi? Because you said you studied mm. two years. You can change between languages if fundamentals are clear for you. So like maybe you feel like, okay, I'm already got the job, so I could start, I could start earlier than I did. I was too much afraid of putting my head out early on, getting rapid feedback, adjusting based on that, and learning the skill on the go. Uh, I started applying like uh, maybe a half a year in, and I didn't get any responses <laughs> for like a half a year or something like that. Uh, but then, and then, then I hit goal. Uh, so I would definitely recommend start uh, start applying as early as possible. Uh, I have to confess I did not uh, finish the, the curriculum because I, I got the job I, I came here for. So I, I, I paid the fee and uh, I'm uh, very happy. We're, we're happy too. <laughs> Actually about uh, applying, I get my first offer from LHV, I think, uh, at when, I, when I was at three months at Kodihvi. So, and they don't even ask me any task about coding. They only ask me about Kodihvi and about myself. So, uh, yeah, apply. <laughs> yeah, I had a completely different experience. <laughs> well, for me, um you know, when you go to these interviews, you have to show a lot of personality, a lot of confidence. So in order for me to do that, I felt like I had to finish the program so that when I go there and I talk about coding and I talk about, you know, why they should have me, I can tell them with a bigger confidence that, yeah, I've, I've done this, you know, grueling process. Kodiofi at times was, you know, it was very difficult, especially at the end uh, with the specialization. It was a huge crunch. And uh, after I had done it, I felt like I had the confidence to go there and say that I'm the person that can do this job. I'm here. So it really depends on you and again, with these uh, software development positions, uh, the, uh, when you go into uh, internships as well, the uh, bar of knowing, it depends of course where you're uh, applying precisely, but they don't expect you to know everything and they don't expect you to start performing and delivering value to the company right away. So you have more time to get uh, to the groove of it. So it's really, you need to like look inside at and uh, you have to ask yourself, am I ready to put myself out there? If the answer is yes, then go for it. As you can hear, uh, you can get a job really quickly if uh, you're the right fit for a company. I want to add that uh, I think I'm not sure ready yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm just doing, you know, like uh, in Russian, you have, uh, we have saying that, uh, uh, that, uh, the scare have a big, big eyes or something like this. Just uh, close your eyes and 
let's let's do let's it. Start, yeah, let's do it. I think that's a great um, phrase to capture uh, the essence of this panel as we are running out of time now. Uh, but just as I noted, some of the key words from, from, from the discussion, I think it's been a super fruitful uh, one. And, um, and hopefully, everyone here has uh, gathered something that they can think about, maybe something that they can uh, take for going forward uh, with, with their job. Uh, application process, but the three key words that I noted down for myself uh, are uh, one is to be proactive, uh, just really kind of put yourself out there, try and, um, well, it goes together with the second keyword of preparation, uh, that you can prepare for uh, the interviews or for the job, in, uh, the job company description itself or doing homework. Um, all that stuff, and then last but not least, just networking and um, and really showing your kind of communication and soft skills, uh, just being bold and doing it. Okay, but I think with this, uh, we're done. Uh, thank you to Mart, uh, Emil, uh, Laura, Lisa, and Annika. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, gifts, gifts, gifts. Thank you very much for the great talk, and for the people who have registered for the speed dating, speed, speed meeting, not speed dating, <laughs> but it's a dating with the recruiters. So uh, in five minutes, I would ask the first round of people to be here because because uh, we need to st start on time to be able to finish on time. So uh, five minutes okay. before half past one, we'll see the first batch. Uh, at the speed meeting desks. And the others.